What's up, people? <laughs> Hold on, let me get situated. <sighs> Had to, um... Ugh. Whew. Man, it's getting rough. Oh, man. <sighs> All right, what are we going to talk about today? Believe it or not, I don't post anywhere near <laughs> the 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 topics I want to talk about because um, I don't I don't think I kind of look at the climate I, I try to look at what people are talking about and I try to make sure that I'm not stepping into any any more special situations without a little thought ah, good morning folks or actually good evening I'm tired I got my third cup of coffee I know, don't judge me. I drink coffee late. I had something I wanted to talk about. That's somebody put in front of me. And I guess I have to talk about it because it's just, you know, but before we jump right into it, let me, I'm gonna dance around a little bit. So, a lot of y'all aren't Game of Thrones fans, right? So I'm a Game of Thrones fan. I like Game of Thrones. And it's not really gonna make a whole lot of sense if y'all don't watch it so but i'll try to give you a little background it's a character on there and his name is hodor and for the first i want to say it's probably for the first couple seasons i don't even know what season we're at but he couldn't speak right anytime somebody said any t anything to hodor he would reply hodor and they say well what are we going to do he said hodor the enemies are coming. Hodor, Hodor. And he would just reply, Hodor. And nobody knew what the hell Hodor was. And it was just crazy. Hodor, just, you know, he couldn't speak. Something bad happened to him in the past. And all he could say was Hodor. Come to find out, and this is a spoiler alert for any of y'all who are watching it, but come to find out this massive, giant, big beef of a guy, right? His whole purpose, you know, he was he was dragging around a little. I think his name was Bren. A couple, uh, he, he would drag around this this crippled child, right? And the child was a, was a prince, son of the king, and uh, and he would drag him through the woods over snow. Oh, you mess with Bren, you'd be in big trouble. This was a big dude, you know, big seven foot dude, three hundred pounds of meat, right? And the whole show you would think okay that's just Hodor you know he's he's got some sort of mental challenge he's mentally ill and he's not really critical to the story but he'll keep Bren alive and if it's not Bren you have to excuse me I, it's been it's been off for a long time I think it's been off for a year and a half since it's been on but in one of the last scenes Hodor was featured in they were running through this cave and the enemies was right behind them zombies and ghosts nasty things about to tear them up you know and they ran through this little cave and they just found a way out and they were going to close the door behind them if you've ever seen the movie aliens the way they like climb on the roof and the, and the walls and like it was that kind of a scene they're coming after them, coming after Bren, about to eat the kids up Bren, i think he was probably about 13 or something and they got through the door they just got through the door they got through the door and they closed the door they got through the last little door of the cave and all the enemies were hundreds of them thousands of them right behind them and hodor leaned against the door and they all the kids they started running they were dragging the crippled crippled bren in the sled they were dragging them through the snow trying to get away from the door get as far from the cave door as possible and i and i if i if i quote it wrong you have to excuse me but and they yelled back hodor hold the door hold the door and it just it started ringing to the viewers like did they say hold the door and it was hold the door because he had to put all that meat up against that door at a cave right so the bad guys wouldn't get out the cave and get brent he's the son of the king he's the future king the king is dead and his whole purpose in life was to hold the door hold the door so the kids could get away 
And that's where I'm coming from. I think Hodor's example was amazing. Great, great show. Y'all got to watch it. But I think as parents, I think as people, human beings, adults, 25 years old, with frontal lobes developed, I think our main purpose on this planet is to prepare the next generation. It's to hold the door. Hold door. I think we, we are all here mostly to hold the door. I don't think we're here to hold the door for ourselves. I think we're here to hold the door for kids. And so, into my topic. <laughs> Boy, if I ain't getting in trouble yet, this, this one's going to do it. Let's talk about reparations. Let's, let's talk about 40 acres in the mule. I was asked, what do I, what do I think about 40 acres in the mule? I'm a little bit weird. I, I probably overthink things a little bit, but reparations, highly controversial topic. I think I'm all for it. Absolutely. Absolutely, 1,000%. I think 40 acres and a mule was a great idea. And, of course, it never came. But before you start yelling at me, I don't think I think about it the way you think about it. I think you got to ask yourself, first, the question is, what are you trying to to repair right because that's reparations like we're trying to repair something we're we can make a choice right that 40 acres it's not 40 acres and a mule anymore it's 40 acres and a john deere tractor right because the mule ain't gonna do it no more so what are we trying to repair are we trying to repair a people are we trying to repair a society are we trying to repair a nation and I know got people yelling and screaming right now, like, Dick, what this, what are you about to say? What this mother, you know, um, just hold it. Just, just, just hold the door for us. Just hold the door. Just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I, I ain't done. Just hold on. So what are we trying to repair? So I think back history is like a great, great, great teacher. And if you pay attention now that we kind of know what they're up to, I think we can use history to solve a lot of problems. So you go back and you ask yourself the question, why would they promise 40 acres and a mule to the families of, of, of to, to, to the families who were, were slaves? Because the North came to save us. <laughs> no, they didn't. No, they didn't. They came because the South wouldn't pay no damn taxes on the slaves. That's why they were trying, look, we want this money too. And if y'all don't give us the money, we gonna just kill y'all, you know. And that's what that was about. So I'm not a Lincoln. I'm not. You're not gonna get me praising that. He went for the wrong reason. It was the abolitionists in the North that forced him to do that. So uh -uh, not I'm not the Lincoln cat. So, but what are we trying to reparate for? Slavery hurt a lot of people, and it wasn't just black folk, right? So, so let's let's use history and let's. Why would the North do that? Well, because they were sick of the South, right? And the South fought them. And they wanted to make sure that there was a one-up in the South. And they drew some really strong divisions between the poor whites and the blacks that were slaves. And what better way to do that than to say, you know what? We're going to get y'all 40 acres and a mule. And the rest of y'all who don't own any land, you know, you're poor, you're, you're getting paid to work on the plantation, you know, paid biscuits. But we're not going to give you nothing. We're just going to give it to the blacks. We're going to give it to the slaves. What do you think? Like, what, what do you think that would actually do? Where you're struggling and your first baby died because you couldn't afford no medicine. And, and the second one came along, you could barely feed him. And... And you were there working for these plantation owners and these railroad railroad tycoons. And all of a sudden, slavery comes to an end. And you're going to give them 40 acres and a mule, and I'm instantly going to be the lower class person in the nation? I 
think if you're really thinking about it, you know what's going to happen next, right? If you if you know Paul Harvey, the rest of the story, <laughs> then the Democrats invent the KKK. That's what happened next. You know why? Because there was a lot of hate. And so the whole 40 acres and a mule thing was about hate. So I think if we're going to talk reparations, let's talk about repairing all the damage slavery did. If less than, what was it, less than 1% of poor whites in the South actually owned slaves, what, what, what did slavery do to their economy? What did it do to their jobs? Uh, it elevated them into instant poverty. Um, slavery damaged many things, and it was only that 1% that benefited from it. Everybody else was devastated. Now, mind you, yes. Some were devastated worse, but it was devastating across the board, which is why there's no way in hell they would do any sort of reparations for slavery to the whole nation it damaged. They just pick one person out that they want everybody to go after. So this is more into the origins of, of white supremacy and racism that have nothing to do with people and everything to do with the government that hands down to you this it's a requirement to be divided. So if we're going to talk about reparations, then I'm good with it. If we can talk about every kid in America, I think if we can talk about all the families that were set back into poverty and dragged here on boats, black and white, I'm good with it. I think we should reparate. I think that every child born in America, I think you should have 40 acres and a John Deere tractor. But it'll never happen. You know, I think that's real reparations. I think that you have extremists on both sides who who push to make sure there's a dramatic conversation. It's an entertaining conversation. It sells newspapers and gets post likes again, but it doesn't actually solve a problem. So I think when you want to talk about a solution, if you want to repair the damage it did, then you have to repair the damage it did to everybody. So I'm good with that, but it'll never happen. And why won't it ever happen? Well, because weak people can't demand a damn thing of their government. And and I know, you know, I'm not weak. I can take care of myself. I, you know, um, if you can't grow your own food, you're weak. If you can't provide your own water, you know, it was funny. I, I, <laughs> I have three boys. And these cats, man, these are, these are some upgrades, boy. These, these boys are bad. These boys are tricky, man. They're like little velociraptors testing me, right? They ain't so little no more. But they used to stage revolutions all the time. And all their revolutions failed. They all failed because I own the keys to the kingdom. I am a dictator, yes. I contradict everything I've ever said to y'all about the Constitution because in my house, I'm a dictator. I brought you into this world. I will starve you out. <laughs> so, so if you don't do what I want you to do, you're not going to eat, which is why you will never see 48, 40 acres in a mule. You will get all these politicians talking about it. You'll get them rebel rousing, but they will never, ever, ever give you the ability to feed your family without them they will never give you the ability to get water without them why because you're a dependent and as long as you're a dependent you can't demand a damn thing you can demand universal health care and you're going to get for-profit health care you can demand whatever you want but you know you can demand slavery to come to an end you can demand peaceful people be let out of prison you're not going to get it. You can demand Canada to be legal and you're not going to get it. You're going to get a license system where the state makes a lot of money because that's what they do. They write laws to make a business out of a problem. But that's where I'm coming from. And this is a quick video because it's actually starting to rain and I don't do rain. This phone can't break this phone. I held out for a long time. I'm not trying to break this phone. So that's that's what I feel. I think if you want to talk about reparations, I think you take the drama out of the conversation. I think you look at a real solution. And if a politician really wants to talk about reparations, then let's repair everybody.
all the families that were set into poverty and destroyed by slavery. So the few plantation owners and the big tycoon and government could do really, really well off of the free labor of the people. That's what I believe on reparations and I'm getting wet. Y'all have a good day.